on my recording and we'll have the whole thing. I should have recorded that nice discussion. That was a really good set of questions there, but that's all right. So anyway, from our, um, from our symmetry in steps one and two, we figured out what direction the electric flux density vector points, and we figured out um, what variables it depends on and doesn't depend on. And we chose a Gaussian surface that is a surface of constant r so that the value of our unknown function of r that is the electric flux density doesn't change over the surface that we're going to integrate on. So now we want to find the total electric which is going to be the integral of this uh, electric flux density dotted with the surface normal vector. Surface normal vector on a sphere is a hat r, r squared sine theta d theta d phi. So far, so good. This a hat r and this a hat r are parallel, so their dot product is one. The integral with respect to phi, nothing else depends on, oh, we need a little more space here. Nothing else depends on phi, so I get a factor of two pi in the front. And then nothing in here depends on theta except for this sine theta. And we already know from doing it a couple times in multiple classes that the integral from zero to pi of sine theta d theta gives us a factor of two. So this whole thing works out to be four pi r squared times d naught as a fun which is a function of r. So that's our unknown function of r in the value of our total electric flux. Notice that since we chose a surface of constant r, um, and this only depends on r, we were integrating a constant, a constant quantity over the surface of a sphere. So we ended up with, this is the surface area of a sphere multiplied by this constant quantity. That's pretty great. Now we set that to the total and equal to the total enclosed charge, which we worked out previously was four pi over a times one minus e to the minus a r for r less than a or four pi over a times one minus one over e for r greater than a. Dividing through by four pi r squared, we end up with one over a r squared over here and one over a r squared over here. To end up with this expression for the magnitude of our electric flux density. As you can see, it has two different values depending on whether you are inside the sphere or outside the sphere, which makes sense because as you expand the size of your Gaussian surface, which is the same as sort of moving away from the center of the sphere, the size of your Gaussian surface gets bigger and it encloses more charge. So you are, you're enclosing more charge as you let R increase until you get out to R that's greater than A and then you are outside the bounds of your surface, uh, of your uh, charge distribution. So the total amount of enclosed charge doesn't increase anymore. <laughs>